Good evening and welcome to today's edition of Keeping It Real with Ramona. I have a wonderful guest with me here. Her name is Jyotsna Kaur Habibulla. Hi Jyotsna. Hi Ramona. Lovely to be How here are you? with you. Great. It's so good to have you here. So I'll just take uh, a couple of minutes and introduce uh, Jyotsna to everyone who's watching this now or might watch the live later. Uh, she's someone who's been working on skill development and creating self-reliance in particular amongst women's groups um, in village uh, Saidanpur uh, and in Lucknow since 2011. She's fa uh, founded the Fiki Flow Lucknow Kanpur chapter and Jyotsna has been involved at a national level as part of the governing body of Flow FLO working for women's empowerment since 2015. So one of her focus areas is actually sustainable livelihoods. Josna works actively to connect the rural youth to jobs in and around their villages as well as in Lucknow. She's been actively working in her family's ancestral village, Saidanpur. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, Josna. How do you pronounce that? Saidanpur. Yes. Okay, Saidanpur. Yes. To improve the lives of women and children with health hygiene, sustainable livelihoods and many many awareness initiatives so you know i've been following her work for a while and i was quite fascinated by some of the things that you know she's been doing i'm going to share a couple of those but of course we're going to get into a longer conversation with jotsna and find out a lot more about what she's been doing so a sewing center was started by her in Saidanpur in 2018 and she supports the English and Digital Learning Initiative or Digital Empowerment Foundation in uh, Saidanpur, connecting many organizations and widening the scope of the Banke Loom project. She's also someone who's been involved with teaching for over two years and she's an executive director of Maxell Leadership Forum and been nominated to head the Women's Entrepreneurship Leadership Forum at Asia Pacific Leadership Forum. She coordinates and organizes leadership development programs, uh, basically in Lucknow. Uh, she also manages the family mango orchard in the village and is part of uh, the young people in agriculture research and development. So, you know, there's quite a bit of work she's doing around, you know, that mango orchard and connected to uh, mangoes, actually, which I personally found really, really cool and interesting. I think she's been working in a way where, you know, uh, mangoes are fruit a lot of us Indians love. We just love, you know, <laughs> mangoes and this is mango season now. So it's interesting the kind of thing she's actually been able to create around that. She's also a mentor and volunteer for Dan Utsav, which is India's festival of giving. So uh, Jyotsna, like I said, it's really a pleasure to have you here with me today. Uh, I would love it's for you to tell us. Also decided. Oh, oh hello. <laughs> so Shake we have, uh, what's your dog's name? His name is Plato. <laughs> what is it? Plato. Plato, okay. So Plato says, I want to be part of this conversation with mommy. How sweet. <laughs> That's lovely. So Josna, okay. tell me a little bit more about your background. So maybe you can, we can start with, you know, what you did uh, maybe in college and then we'll talk a little bit about how you started getting involved in all these awesome things that you've been doing. I think there's been a bit of a technical uh, problem and uh, Jyotsna seems to have frozen over there. Uh, Jyotsna, can you hear me? Okay, I'm going to have to ask her to perhaps rejoin okay. because uh, Josna, can you hear me? Okay, there seems to be a technical problem. I'm going to have to ask Josna to rejoin. Uh, she seems to uh, have frozen over. So uh, in the meanwhile, while we wait for her to rejoin, uh, let me share a little bit more about, you know, um, the mango orchard bit that I was talking about. Um, she, uh, Jyotsna, like I said, has been involved with, it. she's part of the Young People in Agriculture, uh, Agricultural Research and Development. And she's actually the founder, uh, president of Avad Mango Growers Association. And she's the founder of uh, the Uttar Pradesh Mango Festival. I think Jyotsna's joined us, Matt. Let's see. 
Hi, Jyotsna. Good to have you back. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I'd talk a little yeah, bit sorry, about I, all the, you know the work around <laughs> mangoes that you've been doing. That's okay. It happens sometimes. These technical issues happen. So, Jyotsna, maybe you can just start by telling us a little bit more about you know your background in terms of what you did when you were perhaps in college, and then we'll talk a little more about your journey and all the interesting things you've been creating. So, I uh, I'm from Punjab, but I grew up in Delhi. and uh, i went to modern school and uh, then to st stephen's college and like uh-huh. many people when i was when i went to college i really didn't know what i wanted to do so sure. you know i think what i discussed with my parents was just to do something that i found interesting and so i applied for philosophy at st stephen's and uh, so anyway that was a fantastic uh, i think opportunity because we were a class of just eight of us I enjoyed wow. that so much, and I think it really gave me a grounding in logical thought and in questioning things. And but at the same time, when I was in college, I was also working with my parents because they had their own honey business. Uh, okay. And uh, my dad had also been to St. Stephen's and then moved back to the family farm in Punjab to actually, uh, you know, they, they they wanted to focus on rural development. And uh-huh. so when we grew up, my parents had this honey business with farmers and. Uh, you know, uh, people in Punjab, and then they packaged and sold the honey. Uh, we were in Delhi, and the plant was in Punjab. And okay. I uh, got involved in going, you know, after hours after school because the office was just behind the house in the same premises. And I was interested in marketing. You know, I found that that was something that I had an interest in. And so, you know, I was building systems for them, and you know, making calls and doing stuff like that. So I also did a few courses in marketing from Aptech when I was in college. Okay, and, all right. Um, then decided that that was the area i wanted to focus on and i did my mba uh, in international business and marketing after working for a couple of years after college uh-huh. and um, after uh, my mba i worked in uh, marketing for 10 years um, starting out with famous grows in bombay and then uh, heading the first low cost airline in the middle east in marketing in arabia okay. which is still going strong All right. and uh, now i i'm using my marketing expertise in all the things that i do here in lucknow um with the mango festival and the farmers market and with going yeah. to lively woods and so yes. on so we moved uh, to uh, bombay um um and and then to lucknow and um what we what uh, the move to lucknow was actually something that you know my husband and i had discussed for a while because his family is from lucknow and once we had children you know it made sense to bring them to a place where they would be more crowded and we would have time for them and space and so on so this time when he started his own business too my husband amar and i wasn't really working full time after my boys um but then being in lucknow actually gave me more opportunities to start my own thing and work from home um as opposed to the consulting i did for a few years uh, sure. you know when the boys were born and uh, okay. here you have two 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 boys right yes yes they are 13 and 11 and uh, uh, it's 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 fantastic you know involving the children in the things one does because they were just helping me set up the whole thing one of the boys helped me with the frame and all that and you know just, so so it's it's a lot of fun involving the children i think i mean i see you doing that with your daughter and such amazing thing to see okay And so in Lucknow, uh, some of the things you want me to talk about, what I'm involved in. Yeah. Uh, you know, Jyotsna, your vo- uh, voice is kind of fading in and out. I don't know why so that's I'm happening. So I'm going to just quickly change my headset, and perhaps it's okay. okay. Sure. Shall I just do that? Yeah, that's Sorry okay. That. Uh, no problem. It's kind of fading in and out. Little bits of the conversations uh, being uh, cut off. so while she takes care of the headphones i'll continue talking about you know uh, <laughs> the contribution to uh, the work she's been doing with mangoes and um, you know actually there's a mango festival uh, which she's founded it's the uttar pradesh mango festival which is now in its eighth year so basically with that what jyotsna does is she promotes small farmers and brings together farmers consumers members of the press government institutions in research for agriculture supporting uh, you know the that's okay uh, i can hear you i can hear you now jyotsna can you hear me sorry one second i'm tapping no no problem 
so from from two, 2016 onwards the event is on the calendar of uh, the uttar pradesh tourism and it's actually organized in collaboration with the relevant government bodies bringing in private participation to grow the festival to attract economic and culinary tourism and has actually put up on the ma mango map of the world so i i think that's you know pretty fascinating uh, you know what jotna you've been able to create with that so you know what i was going to say was that what i really thank love you. is the fact you know thank you so much for sharing about you know your background with marketing and your journey to where you are now and i think it's very very fascinating that you know those skills that you obviously acquired you know with whether it's your degree that you got or the actual work that you did uh, all those years uh, in the different organizations you've been with how you beautifully you know applied those uh, you know uh, with the work you're doing now and not only have you applied that in the work that you're doing it's beautiful that you're actually helping other people who probably wouldn't be able to get those marketing skills you know josna that's really really commendable that you know uh, in the rural setup as well you're creating a lot of change by you know helping people have access to that so so that's that's totally incredible so um, you know when you decided to move back to L lucknow was that a difficult decision for you um well you know i mean we also spent a lot of time when i was young going back and forth to uh, our village in punjab which is close to ludhiana and those are i think my best childhood memories summer holidays you know on the farm and yeah. so when uh, amar discussed it with me i mean i i really thought it was the best thing to do for the children and for us and yeah. uh, i i really think there was no better decision we made than moving here because i think people have more time for each other you know in a place where you, when you're not in a metro and uh, you can do a lot more things and then because uh, you know my grandmother in law had been uh, uh, she had been doing a lot of work with women and children and a lot of stuff that i'm interested in so it was really easy to actually fit in and do the things i wanted to do which may not have been so easy somewhere else yeah that's true so i believe you know uh, the children's uh, great grandmother is that right or is it your husband's great grandmother to, uh, tell us a little bit more about her because i think you've shared that you know she's someone who actually uh, inspired you a lot so i'd love to know a little bit more about her and i have a comment here from vandita yadav vanita hi vanita ha uh, sorry vanita yadav saying she's doing yeah. fabulously well with the mango festival yeah people are missing the mango festival this year because we couldn't have a mango festival obviously because of covid but we did not an app for farmers and there's some exciting stuff that we're doing taking our farmers market online we'll talk about that later but so yes, dadi which is actually my husband's grandmother who unfortunately okay. passed away uh, two years ago she uh, was almost 102 when she passed away and she was over 90 wow. when we moved to lucknow and uh -huh. she was the most amazing person i have ever met um she was on the board of every organization you could think of apart from the women's uh, 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 not, uh, child welfare association she's headed and she was she set up seva which is the chicken curry uh, uh, you know livelihood uh, organization um and she worked for women and children in so many different capacities she was tireless i mean there's videos of her online if you google it see hamid abdullah was her name um right. and she had 85 there's a beautiful video of her on doordarshan and when the presenter asked her, you know how do you have energy to do so many things she said you know i just i don't get tired uh, i think i should just keep going and it's so much fun to do these things and she wow. was like a teenager when we came here you know we used to have to tell her that no you can't go and inaugurate something every day you know you're 92 wow she sounds like quite an iconic lady so, so that's awesome that you know you had, had that so much inspiration on all sides you know right from my parents who uh, worked for rural livelihood and set up their own business ani and now they are actually living the ideal life living in goa growing their own food uh, you know creating a sustainable lifestyle my dad teaches economics and uh, you know to uh, my my uh, in-laws my father-in-law also who is done such amazing work uh, in his capacity in the ias he was the first chief information commissioner and uh, they supported our whole 
idea of what we wanted to do when we moved to Lucknow. Because you know, the idea was that we moved here and decided what to do with our old house, which is in the main Hazrat Ganj. And none of the old houses in Lucknow uh, have been converted in, you, you know, there's no adaptive reuse to uh, convert them to something that has utility. So we converted our house, which is in Hazrat Ganj, into a boutique retail space. And uh, we were able to, uh, you know, retain the structure as it is. And we got brands like Ritu Kumar and Gitanjali Salon and Anukhi and a beautiful local cafe called Cherry Tree. So in a sense, people can visit it and imagine what it was. And, uh, you know, uh, at least and we get to live on the premises, which is beautiful. So I've organized events here like Royal Fables and the Women Writers Festival. I do the Farmers Market here. Wonderful. I mean, I think, you know, uh, that is also another um, area, you know, that I think you've been focusing on. Uh, you know, I think you've talked about that in the past that, you know, buildings in particular in Lucknow, which are heritage buildings are kind of, you know, not being taken care of. So that's amazing that, you know, you've uh, kind of uh, redone or refurbished the place and, you know, you're actually getting a lot of value out of it and you're enjoying the property at the same time. I mean, there are lots more, I think, that can be done, done in that space. So that must have been a first for Lucknow, right? That that creation yes. of that kind of a place, right? That, that wow. was the first such building. And now there's a boutique hotel called Lebua. And um, I hope there'll be more such buildings where people can, you know, reuse their old houses. That's wonderful. So, uh, Jyotsa, uh, tell me a little bit about, uh, <clears throat> you know, um, I wanted to actually first say I love the, the sari that you're wearing. It's really pretty. Uh, the colors looking very nice on you. Is that one of the creations from? Yes, from our weavers. This is it's a, it's a pure cotton sari, uh, and it's okay. so soft and comfortable to wear. It's from our weavers group, uh, which is Banke Loom from Sedanpur, and uh, the products are available online on the Digi Kadha website, uh, digikadha.in. Okay. And uh, we're right. fortunate to be working with an amazing organization called uh, the Digital Empowerment Foundation in our village okay. in Sevenpur. And uh, uh, DEF is headed by this inspiring uh, gentleman called Osama Manzar, and he's working in 26 states in India. And uh, the, you know, so we were able to um, get him to our village. And the idea is that they work with uh, the, the livelihoods artisans the things which are already present you know which people probably used to make earlier and then they upgrade them to the current market so for example weavers used to weave there but um, you know the looms were not functioning so they upgraded the looms then the the designs the colors and they give inputs so um, uh, the idea is that we set up our area as a craft village and that's our dream so everything with the mango festival and with the tailoring center and the weavers, it all tie into that. We had started actually, uh, you know, winter tourism, getting people to go down there, eat the local food and um, the whole concept of you know, the, the stories. Because people who are living in a city, I mean, Lucknow may not be as big as Bombay or Delhi, but people living in a city are as far removed from the rural farm areas as anywhere else. When we used to have That's a mango true. festival, there are many families who for the first time had sat in an orchard eating mangoes under the tree. The concept wow. is that we to connect people to nature and for them to respect the food, respect the farmers, Connect consumers with the farmers. Why should there be anybody else between them, right? So that's the concept around the farmers market and the mango festival. That firstly, consumers should buy directly from their local farmers, right? And then we should reduce our footprint. We should buy a local and seasonal uh, food that's better for our immunity, that's better for our health, and that's better for our economy as well. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, Jyotsna, like this whole trend about organic food and all of that, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Because a lot of the things that you're talking about, you know, uh, relate to, you know, sort of uh, organic food. And a lot of people think that organic food is something that, you know, that concept has come from overseas. What are your views on that? So, you know, that's what a lot of thing, people think that, you know, we are aping concepts that have come from the West and so on. But when we were growing up here in India, right, everything was natural. Butter was turned from milk that was got from the cow. Everything was eaten. And, you know, I grew up in Punjab, 
go home for the holidays everyone yeah. you know ate everything that was grown locally naturally you didn't eat vegetables that were not in season right so this whole concept of that you have to eat broccoli all year round because it's green and it's really good for you you don't have to do that yeah. right? eat what's local and seasonal that's better for your health and it's better for the economy and for the community so i think yeah. one of the focus areas of mine is how we uh, can actually support our community and help the people around us to benefit so if you're going to buy something buy vegetables from your local farmers right um yeah but both the farmers market and the mango festival it focuses also on connecting entrepreneurs to farmers and to seasonal farmers so we have a lot of bakers we have a lot of um, uh, other entrepreneurs who are now making stuff um, there, there's this amazing uh, baker who's part of my mango festival team and farmers market team called Apurva and she bakes only with local produce and with, uh, you know so she makes like this rose drink with rose petals she makes this mango wow. saffron jam and uh, uh, one of one of the entrepreneurs who comes to farmers market um, they actually uh, developed uh, a raw mango dish wash powder every year at the mango festival we launch a new product so one of the uh, hair and skin care companies launched a whole mango range like body shop you know so they had a whole uh, mango uh, soap and sha gel and shampoo and their product range was so successful they have it all year round so firstly it creates quite incredible yeah livelihoods right livelihoods it helps create more natural local products so the idea is of course we promote the traditional things so you know of course the mango chutneys and the aam ka panna and all those things so then how see all these things like you have the chicken curry the mango is also the source of the paisley pattern which is like famous all over the world for design right so yeah. like like that curry can't stay only in that way so we have to upgrade and use Oh, in a manner that people want to use them more, right? So we can have dehydrated mango slices. We that's what we have to do. We have to actually give our rural people the opportunity of the knowledge that we have and the marketing support that we have, so that we can grow together. Yeah. So I mean, so a lot of this, uh, you know, these ideas are these ideas that you kind of, you know, uh, bounce off um, and. you know then they are implemented how does that work so like for the mango festival i uh, started i was part of isec i uh, you know in college we yeah. call it isec yes. in the university yes and yeah. so when i came here and i got the idea to start the mango festival because i started going to the agricultural university to learn about mangoes i really never thought i'd go into farming you know my family yeah. has been farming <laughs> in punjab forever and i just thought farming is the most boring thing i'm never going to do it But when we moved here, we had to look after our mango orchard. My husband Amar was traveling back and forth to Bombay because he had to set up his company, and uh, you know I had to figure out what to do with the orchard. We had this old 50-60 year old orchard with old trees, with termites somewhere. Some trees were fabulous, they looked huge. I didn't know what to do with them, so I started going to this institute. This is fabulous institute. Central Institute of Subtropical Horticulture. It's an Indian Council of Agricultural Research body, and uh, this is such an amazing director of the institute, Shankar. He firstly, this organization they give so much advice to farmers. They have their website. They have uh, you know they give you handouts. They give you PDF. They have it all in English, Hindi, everything. And on top of that, when the director is asking me for advice on marketing. because he said oh you have a marketing background tell us how can we promote <laughs> mangoes so that was how the mango festival actually came about there was a, a bill and melinda gates foundation organization called uh, sunehra prayas which was actually okay. working with mango farmers you know to see how they could improve them uh, their their marketing and their product and so on so basically i linked everybody together i linked the institute the institute imagine has 700 varieties of mangoes And they used to wow, seven hundred. Did you 700? say seven hundred varieties? Yes, wow. beautiful. Just to go there, it's like any mango lover's dream come true. Down from the purple mango that's developed from the Japanese market to every type of mango you can think of. So they used to do an exhibition that was only for the technical people. So I got their exhibition, and I got the farmers from the technical department. and i got entrepreneurs and we got amazing you know corporate partners uh, like maza on board and um, uh, the local milk uh, 
uh, a company here is called Gyan. They did a mango yogurt one year and they got, came on board. Um, and, and just amazing brands just joined us every year to help us support. So it's a community supported event now where now UP Tourism has put it on the calendar. The horticulture department has put it on the calendar. And I get a hundred students after tying up with ISEC the first year. Every year I get a hundred students who come and intern with me. And you know, college students and some senior students they have so much energy that even if you know you're fed up dealing with uh, you know the past that be or whatever, trying to figure out how to do things, they feel anything is possible. So you them, you have so much motivation and enthusiasm that uh, it, it's really fun. That's amazing. That's incredible. Uh, tell me, I believe there's also some cooking uh, contest or something that you organize, right? Yes. I'd love so, for you to share more about that with so us. Putting all the mango stuff together, the first thing we thought is let's have a cooking contest to get people to come. Because the first time we did this mango festival, we did it in our orchard, which is an hour away from Lucknow. And all we right. Were we thought, how are we going to get people to come? We have to do some fun stuff. So there's this uh, fabulous master chef in Lucknow called Ankaj Badoria. And we, uh -huh. I, I asked her, that, will you please come and judge a mango cooking contest in the heat, in the middle of June? She agreed oh, to wow. drive out and come, <laughs> not knowing how many people are going to be there. And I begged my son, who must have been, uh, and he's 13 now, so he was six at that time. And he used to love to cook, okay. as he does now. Both of them and uh, he made uh, a mango drink and he made something else. I can't remember what it was now. And one of my husband's aunts who lives in Sedan comes up to this book. Uh, me, auntie, I asked her, please do something. I didn't know how many people are going to come, but actually three other people brought some mango dishes. So there were these you know, uh, five competitors and she gave the prizes. And now every year we get about 200 contestants who actually want to participate in this cooking contest. Last year, Pankaj Badoria's Academy, they televised the funny cook-off, you know, and people made stuff like uh, mango sushi rolls and, you know, all kinds of amazing fusion stuff with mangoes. It's so much fun. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. And Jotra, what I wanted to actually say was that, you know, I mean, in, in some ways it would have been just easy for you to continue, you know, in that corporate job and, you know, uh, the normal regular path. I mean, I have to say that, you know, it's incredible that both you and your husband decided to make this move back to Lucknow. And after being back, you know, you've been able to create so much, you know, not just for your own family with what you're doing, but for so many other people, you know, I mean, that's something that is, you know, incredible. I have to really, you know, say that because a lot of people would just kind of continue on the path that they're on so it's it's really really exciting and it's beautiful that you know you've uh, sort of mentored so many people also so tell me a little bit more about you know the programs that you run around education and i think the digital bit where you know you've been able to make that connect for uh, maybe young people maybe even older people if you can share a little bit more about that and you know the maxwell leadership foundation that you're a part of what are the things that you create with that Okay, so one thing first I'd like to say before I start talking about mentorship is, you know, moving from a corporate job to entrepreneurship. Uh, I do a lot of you know, mentorship with students now and, and, and young people, and there's never been a better time than now to start your own business. It's a great idea to go and work with a corporate, to get experience, to learn how systems work and so on. But starting your own business, you can follow your passion. So whatever you really believe in, something that you're passionate about, just do it, you know, because uh, particularly now, you know, with this uh, current, uh, you know, unusual situation we're in, everything is now moving online, right? Because people can't really be face to face. So we're yeah. moving our farmers market online so that consumers can connect with farmers and, you know, we're not left with, uh, you know, farmers not being able to sell their uh, produce. And, Consumers who want natural fresh produce. Anyway, I'm digressing. You, you, so you want me to talk about the mentorship? Yes. So, so um, I, education was never really thought, something I thought I'd be able to do. I was I mean, being in marketing and working and all. Like I, I was always able to stand up and speak to a number of people. But you know, teaching people, particularly teaching children, was something that really scared me. And I used to tell my friends who were teachers, I don't know how you do it. 
but i think doing with the work that i was doing and you know particularly connecting with uh, uh, entrepreneurs connecting with uh, students and all that i found i was doing a lot of mentorship and uh, so as part of this uh, you know one of the um, um, amazing uh, collaborators that i worked with uh, dr ashraf wizvi he is really the brain behind this excel leadership uh, council he has brought together people um, you know from all fields from all over the world uh, who right. have been professors uh, uh, in iits and iims and the idea is actually to give the opportunity to people who can't afford it to have a good uh, you know sort of management or, or to basically improve their skills so vocational training so at the moment we actually have a, a program that's coaching mba aspirants for the okay army. and and i'm for the first time i'm teaching english grammar and uh, you know uh, because we didn't have anyone to teach english and so you know, asked me you have to teach something so i said okay looking at the whole syllabus i can't do physics <laughs> and chemistry and i mean it's enough doing maths with my kids i can't uh, limit english it was so interesting so we just started two days ago they had 300 applicants they took an exam and uh, we have 32 uh, you know young 18 19 year old boys from all over the country they're in bombay and they're in bihar and they're all over the place a lot of the uh, one of the issues that they have is that you know they don't have such good spoken or written english so sure. we sure. have four weeks and uh, i think we need to get there and get them up to speed and, and i don't know this is the first time we've done this coaching so i hope after a month or uh, two months we can share what our success rate is and then of course there's something that's very close to my heart is the women's uh, leadership council because see i mean that's why my focus is sustainable livelihoods for women because i feel when we give a woman not just a job but a way to sustain herself a, a livelihood some way that she can earn money without depending on somebody else then she's going to take her whole family she's going to make her kids educated she's going to carry her community forward with her true And same thing with the leadership council uh, i mean i met uh, these professors they are all fabulous i told them why they know women why they know women applicants why they know women in your awards so then they immediately go to join and start this women leadership cell and uh, now i mean i think we we are responsible right you know you and i all of us are responsible that's true i agree to open the door to open the doors i tell all the uh, young people i'm talking to boys have to open the doors to bring more girls with them right and girls yeah. have to bring other people so if we got the opportunity if we've had uh, you know uh, uh, every opportunity that that that's available to us now we have a responsibility to actually allow other women to come forward who may not have had the opportunities we had you know one of the things that i love about what you've just spoken about is that so many people just you know want to complain and you know talk about a lot of uh, problems that are there that exist in the country and not as many want to do something to change it so <laughs> I mean it's awesome that you know you got in there and you know you recognize that you know uh, creating yeah, something like this would about right you and I yeah. were talking about this and I said absolutely I mean, from what I've heard so many inspiring people speakers say is everybody can make a difference so you absolutely you about how we're connecting online right now in the time of corona so all our yeah. maxel programs now are all run on uh, you know on on online uh, uh, classes and so it's fabulous we can have professors sitting in the us we can have uh, uh, people interacting from all over the place and uh, you know so it gives people such an opportunity to get the best kind of learning that they can and there's a lot of people who have free time so with our nda preparation now we've reached out to somebody who's a chemistry teacher in school an army wife other people retired generals you know who are willing to actually everyone wants to do something right as a friend of mine here in lucknow was saying he says i can't go out now you know so i mean i'd rather connect online and do something useful right? so we Uh, we had this great group uh, where we uh, got together and collected sheets and got people to stitch masks and um, uh, so my sons actually did a fundraising for the masks that the girls in the village were making and um, so that's so awesome there's a lot of things that we can do actually online right now also i know a lot of people have been getting low and getting depressed because you feel you can't go out you can't do things but think of the things that we can do right because we have access 
through this platform, right, we can connect with each other. So uh, connect with positive people. Don't be the Netflix generation and do interesting things. Watch Keep It Real with Ramona because she's really interesting people. <laughs> so sweet. Thank you so much. Uh, since you know you brought up, uh, you know, uh, children a couple of times, you know, uh, what would you say? Because you know, I know that. the skills that you have acquired in the past with the work you've done obviously in everything that you're creating and you know you you wear so many different hats you're not just involved in one thing you're creating you know all the time and you're creating so many different things what would you say to you know young people who uh, might sometimes not want to walk the traditional route you know is there a piece of advice you want to give them because you know you've had the best of both in the sense you've done that and now you're doing something different so is there anything you'd like to say to the younger generation So I think one thing that the younger generation really has to focus on is you, know, you have more opportunities than any of us have had in the past because sure. you can actually make your passion your profession. You know, so just dream whatever you want to do. It could be anything. You are not bounded by five professions that you have to join. You can do anything. So you know, just do it. Just decide what you want to do. get uh, you you know, get yourself qualified in that field get some experience in that field and do it just go for it yes <laughs> yeah i think a lot of uh, i mean i'm not saying that just jump into anything but sometimes it's like too much of overthinking something also you know uh, kind of you know will take away from that creativity or you know that passion that you have so that that's great advice there uh, so uh, jyotsna you know there's this uh, citizens for lucknow group uh, do you want to share a little bit more with us about that what is it about and what are the things that are getting created with that so uh, you know uh, like the kind of thing that we can do now where we can connect with like minded people on any topic that you're interested in right, online yeah. Uh, yeah we actually were a small group that started right here in lucknow you know people who right. are passionate about restoration about heritage because uh -huh. every city in india i think has so much history and culture and our old buildings now we can't keep blaming the government blaming somebody else oh my god they're not doing anything what can you do about it right there's so many citizens initiatives crowd funding uh, and and uh, you know other organizations that have got involved look at that beautiful garden that the aga khan foundation has built in delhi uh, yeah the nizamuddin um, uh sundar nursery right yes yes it's so beautiful so the fact is i've been to it it is actually very very beautiful really oh, great so yeah. amazing yeah. and now in lucknow you know particularly uh, in, you know people think that we can't do anything so uh, it's so easy to get together you know, for example there's a there's a, a drm uh, the, the railway of the main road in hazrat ganj and when the metro uh -huh. was was uh, you know they put up a very ugly granite uh, lift right in front of a beautiful old historic building so you know we have this fabulous lady who heads our team called aditi chakravarti who's written a beautiful book also the houses of lucknow called rehaish right. and you know okay. she was so motivated we have to do something about it okay so we wrote uh -huh. letter she was and the end of result we got uh, something written about in the newspaper there's a fabulous woman editor of the hindustan times imagine in up we have had a woman editor for i think 15 or 20 years or so it aren and they and they wrote about it and uh, we we got them to actually replicate the porch which they had locked, knocked down so the, the, at the moment we're working on a beautiful thing built by one of the nawabs to his wife called lal baradari in lucknow university uh -huh. and uh, again there's a woman still heading the project uh, <laughs> the university so i think yeah, a sisterhood you know a strong sisterhood is something that we build and when we work together we can achieve anything yeah i agree with you on that i totally totally agree so tell me more about the farmers market and also about the dan utsav so you know uh, maybe you can share a little bit more about how you know the farmers market came about Uh, how it's been over the last few years what's happening with it currently because i know with you know the pandemic and everything a lot of uh, events that you know would happen in the past are on hold so if you can share a little bit more about that that would be great 
So in 2010, we moved to Lucknow. In 2013, I started the Mango Festival. And then, you know, the Mango Festival, because lots of farmers and people started contacting me. I met some of the entrepreneurs who started Mango through that. And then I got a lot of people who were interested in, um, you know, a regular farmer's market, not just once a year at the Mango Festival. And yeah. also because, you know, we are interested in eating natural, eating healthy. So you're looking for, like, where can I get good from a farmer? Where can I get vegetables, you know, directly, locally, and so on? So through yeah. all that, actually, I connected with, you know, people and thought, let's do a farmer's market. Now, 2015, when we did it in Lucknow, uh, you know, first you have to get people together, the, uh, uh, the farmers and a few entrepreneurs. There's a sure. fabulous baker who I had to ask her, please, can you bake? with uh, you know uh, natural uh, you have to bake with organic sugar you have to bake with organic uh, atta and so on and and shubhi she baked this amazing you know she baked little cake puffs and she baked lovely bread and stuff and now you have to call people but you see everyone's not sold on the organic concept so you get stuff we got ghee i remember from himachal once which was amazing and then you left with all the stuff then you left distributing it to people so that's how it started in 2015 but okay. now you know, first I used to do once a year. There were again these okay. amazing girls, uh, Shinjini and Swati. Uh, Swati now works in Himachal with women. Uh, look her up, Color Caravan. She's doing amazing stuff with women in Himachal. Uh, they make little uh, woolen toys for, uh, you know, it's a livelihood project that she runs there with the women. I'm sure we'll uh -huh. see her on one of your shows after this. And uh, <laughs> so Shinjini and Swati, you know, they, they say, I told, I was talking to people, I want to do a farmer's market, but you know, you really need a team to organize things. And they came on board, so we did like a recycle uh, a kind of a carnival, and we got all these people, and we got, we did a workshop for kids, and so on. And that's how it started. So then, you know, I used to do the festival once a year and do the farmer's market once a year. But then slowly, other entrepreneurs joined, you know, got interested, uh, approached me. I got a proper team for my farmer's market. Now, over the last two and a half years, we have run the market almost bi monthly in the winter. So, from October to April, we have uh, about four or five markets, and uh, we've got about 150 farmers, uh, entrepreneurs, people making natural skin and hair care products, uh, artisans, uh, people making natural makeup, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, organic and natural fabrics, uh, everything from your gifts. See, because why can't we, I mean, when I was thinking about what to wear for the program, now I feel when we go out, when we do things, you know, we have to be um, focused on sustainability, right? We've all realized we're sitting at home for the last four months. Nobody's bought stuff. We don't need that much stuff, right? That's so how yeah. can we... Really We've learned that them. how we can get by with very little as compared exactly. to Exactly. I think I was wearing like five pair of clothes the week and then would be I think it's the same for so many of us. <laughs> I really didn't unpack my saris and you know I was wearing sometimes now this is actually a sari because I stood up and yeah. showed you earlier. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> on the meetings I would just put a dupatta over whatever I was wearing. You know, I was like who's gonna get dressed? <laughs> the fact is and then I really feel like you know I wear my mother's saris, my grandmother's saris why shouldn't we reuse and use and appreciate what we have? The fabrics that are like 50, 60 years old are much better than the fabrics available now. Uh, That's so, true. I, mean, I have a 100 year old sari that my mom just gave to me. I've not uh, used it yet, but I mean, if you look at the work on it, you know, yes. uh, compared to something that was bought like 10 years ago, that work, you know, still has a sheen that you can't find. You know, on oh, any we have to, you know, yeah, we sort have of to creation. help these artisans. We have to ensure that these things are kept alive. You know, yeah. the Banarsi weave and the, uh, the the actual hand loom doesn't doesn't give way to machine woven. So you know, if you're buying something from a weaver, if you're buying something from a market, don't pay hundred rupees less to get the machine woven one. Think this is yeah. somebody's livelihood. This is somebody's food that you're taking away from them. You know, you yeah. can afford to pay that 100 rupees extra, just do it, yeah, buy handmade things. So that was the whole, how the whole market, uh, you know, came about. And it was a yeah. journey. Now, I mean, anybody who comes to the market, they may come only for two markets a year because they get enough customers for the rest of the year. And now we're going to be online. So we are on Instagram and on Facebook as Lucknow Farmers Market. And soon awesome. uh, you have a whole e-cart. 
So you can order our products from anywhere. Uh, we tied up with and India you're shipping. Post. You're shipping all over India. We tied up with India Post for the um, mangoes. So uh, okay. you know, I'm, I'm I'm going to be talking to them about uh, the farmers market products as well. So it's really exciting, you know. Yeah, that's awesome. So I have a couple of comments here, uh, and uh, she says. Uh, Sorry, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing the name right. So maybe you can help Bray. me. Yeah, Bray. 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 Yes. Hi. She says, I, I really admire you for your efforts and keeping your heritage very well. And then she said, uh, love to have you in our family. So that's a really, really yes. she, she, <laughs> beautiful she's compliment. Aunt. Okay. How nice. And Samara's uh, sending a lot of claps. I think, oh, you know, the con conversation you. was kind of... Uh, centering around uh, what you were talking about how you know we've really got to you know keep uh, the heritage alive in terms of you know even weavers or anyone who's been uh, doing something that's an, a traditional art and you know over time those are dying so i think that's when you know she kind of sent those claps across and then arpita satish rai says keep rocking jyotsna ji yeah, so i mean fantastic lady who's part of uh, one of the webinars that i'm involved in right now is uh, something that we're working on on vocational skill and training so there's a, a very inspiring uh, 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 man called pradeep singh who has his own ngo here in lucknow and he's brought such good people onto the same platform i saw so met uh, you know um, arpita also through him and we are now doing a three week vocational training for ngos for rural okay. uh, youth you know because i think vocations are going to go now because kids are dropping out of school to class 8 because our current schooling doesn't give you a job you finish job you finish college you don't get a job so we need vocation from class 8 upwards we need vocations so there's a really interesting program that i also got involved with now you were talking about dan utsav i really want to talk about that from yeah please do because in dan utsav uh, where there's an idea connect program you know where they were connecting uh, women with girls uh, over uh, over 12 or 13 to talk to them about vocations and about what they could do and um, uh, uh, so based on that you know they're they're working on something in lucknow and i'm part of this amazing team uh, which is volunteers for the anutsa uh, the joy of giving week which is celebrated every year from the 2nd to the 8th of october and uh, i've been involved in it for about 5 years and it is Abulous festival. So just look it up, danutsav.org. It's on Facebook, it's on the website, and um, it's something that you can do with your community, with your family, and anything that brings you joy. And you can actually give a lot of joy to other people by giving your time, not just giving money, because just giving money doesn't really give anybody. that my joy you can share a skill so there are people who've done amazing things like in a village they thought let's thank all our uh, you know you know the people who do things for everyone like the postal workers not just the postal workers and the police everybody knows but even people like the guy who runs the morgue or the uh, uh, crematorium and you know uh, so there was there's a video somewhere if you search dan utsav and you know this crematorium workers And I, so this, okay. I actually started crying when the, all the children had a thank you card for him. So wow. you know, do thank the people who do things for us. So simple things like giving tea to your security guards, giving them a treat for your birthdays. So I think I got involved with such a. How much time do we have, Vinod Ramona? Uh, we're gonna uh, be chatting for another, I think, maybe five ten minutes. That's okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Please, please, I can keep talking. Yeah, no, it's very, I, very interesting what you're actually sharing. So please go ahead. Yeah, my dad told me when I was growing up that I should become a lawyer because you know I could just convince anyone to do anything. So I've used my powers of persuasion well over the years. Um, that's a good I, skill I, to have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great skill. So, to have. Um, so this Danutsav, it's like a, it's a connect between urban and rural. is that what it is or is it no, that's more than that it's much more than that it's okay. actually 
you can do anything you want to it's the joy of giving the concept is okay. that you know within this one week you you all get together to do something in your community to make a difference okay. to make other people feel happy and in making okay. somebody else feel happy actually you feel so happy so people don't realize and then when they see how much joy they get by doing something we may tell them do it once a year you know we send out these emails and all that as volunteers we do all these things once people do it you know you're hooked and you just keep doing it right you keep so it, it's this yeah. whole concept of giving uh, which which i think you know we had to bring it back into our society that it was very firmly entrenched earlier but it's something that we have to bring back to our children bring it back to ourselves because people have i think you know become silos now we are, you know in, in we live in these buildings and there may be slums outside we don't know how to connect or what to do so it it's so easy to actually reach out and make a difference how together people communities people have made a difference um and there is a lot of examples i mean if people go on to dance so on youtube and you look at videos so there's this guy who you know used to bring lunch he used to serve uh, uh, his, his boss in office his lunch and the guy used to eat half a plate and leave half a plate one day he walked the past the cafe and he saw his uh, you know uh, the, the guy who served him eating half the plate he felt so guilty you know the next day when uh, he served his lunch he actually cut the food in half and left it on the side and he ate half and he gave it to him so the fact is you know we waste so much of the time uh, audrey hepburn said that you know the reason we have two hands is one is to help ourselves and one is to help others so you know when are we going to give it back I think people just keep waiting yeah. to give it back. No, I want another pair of diamond earrings, or I don't know. What else. <laughs> <laughs> and but and you know, you you embody that so beautifully, Jotsna. You know, you're using both your hands in the best way possible. <laughs> you know, not only are you creating for yourself, your family, for the community, you're creating for so many more people. So that's really, really admirable. Uh, so tell me, like, what are your plans for the future with all these different things that you're creating? Like, what are your plans? Uh, and also, I wanted to also talk a little bit about you can figure, you know, which part you want to talk about first about actually getting children, like our kids, our families, really involved. Like, you know, I think we've talked about this in the past where it's like show them the reality of what's going on. So, you know, do you want to talk a little bit about that maybe first? So I think one of the things that we've always done, my husband Amar and I, is that you know we involve the children in what we do. So you know, um, so with my farmers market, the kids would help out and you know do stuff, and so they did a raffle. And now there's so many kids who come and they bake stuff and do you know. So the kids are always doing something. There's another. Uh, there, there's this amazing baker uh, called Himani. Her mom grows herbs. There are three generations of. Okay, so Himani's mother. She grows amazing herbs, and she brings them, Rita, Auntie, to the market. And Himani bakes these amazing, uh, you know, cakes and stuff without any chemicals and stuff. And then her son, because she, he would come with her, he's about ten or eleven. He would teach uh -huh. people origami and you know, like they were, for, you know, just little crafts. So I yeah. think that's a great example of how we've got to do it. You know, we've got to involve the children in what we do. So whether I uh, so. we joined this amazing organization called Robin Hood Army which you know is across the whole country and i would take the kids and we would go out on these donation drives and you know they they take food and they do uh, distribute leftover food the food that people do it it's a huge drive that they're doing right now robin hood army to join them uh, they do it every year for 15th august and i think particularly now you know with a lot of people at home and not having Like lively ones. So sure. first the kids would crib and complain in the summer. They have to go to a slum and it's dirty and what's this and whatever. But you know the joy that you get when you're giving someone just roti or anything, you know, a packet of biscuits or something. And and then you know we would get in a circle and then people would share and talk and whatever. I think you know we've got to get the kids to meet everybody. Oh, you can't say that this is dirty or that's that. They can't go there. They can't go here. They've got to live in the real world, right? So we yeah. can't put a glass bubble around our children. We've got to get them out and get them to do things. So the the great thing is that you know my boys are doing that. Your daughter is doing that. Each of us, we've got a responsibility to do it. Yeah, I totally agree with you that. I mean, you know, um, sometimes one finds that a lot of uh, kids. Uh, even kids young people as well there's so much insulation you know it's like very kind of you know this is my world and that's all that exists 
so i mean i think we've got to create you know those opportunities for for them and you know lead by example which i think you're doing beautifully because i'm sure as your boys watch you doing that you know they feel inspired that you know there's obviously a lot you know in in the work that mom's doing and uh, i think if we as adults as the older generation would do do more of the things that you know you along your lines it doesn't have to be exactly the same there's always different ways of giving like you said you know yes. so just where we are right now we can find you know, we can connect exactly yeah just we can connect to your right community people. around you do do anything that you want to do right so it can yeah. be setting up a library it can be uh, you know uh, people don't have access to children don't have colors and paper you know so can we reuse yeah. paper do drawing contest absolutely anything that's what happens in dance too you can just drawing contest you know, so much fun and people get so much joy from it and and then you were talking about what are my plans yeah tell me what are your plans for the future i mean uh you're doing just so many interesting things i mean they're different in many ways but i see the kind of you know interconnectedness between all of them because they obviously you know are very representative of who you are as a person you know and what you're trying to create so i see the connects between all the different things you're doing but what what are your plans for the future going forward so i uh, one thing i i really dream about is creating that craft village you know the thing that we're working on in our village in seven yeah. and yeah. Uh, uh, this winter in fact we are going to have the concept of people coming to volunteer work in the village and actually you know improve uh uh giving us some ideas and things we've got a little push back on that but there's a lot of stuff that's still happening there so how what all how we can connect more people to our projects and uh, mm-hmm. uh, with 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 maxel um uh, you know and and the work that i'm doing with vocational training with organizations that i've connected with some of them through covid you know there's this atmanirbhar vocational training program that we're doing right now i think all right we have the opportunity right now to connect with like minded people right and to do things yeah. that we're passionate about so absolutely reaching out to more women and helping more women uh, to uh, you know attain their goals um, um so for the leadership uh, you know council with the women leadership council uh, to have you know where there all these talks and conferences and things where you will see all men on the panel and no women you know we have uh-huh. to improve uh, how women are represented give women who don't have a voice a voice help them find their voice where they are where they feel they can't speak out so i think we just have to bring more women forward because you know the concept is Uh, you know that women hold up half the sky, and and if we're not bringing them forward, then like the girls used to say in one of my favorite comics as a child, I, you know, Astrid and Obelix. I don't know if you read them. Um, yes. That you know the sky is going to fall down. So this one, I mean, we have to allow women and help women to come forward. I think that's a real, that's a focus area for me. So with that, Wonderful. actually, I started the Fikhi Women's Wing in UP too, and we have yeah. a fabulous president right now, Janabi Pukan, who's really focused on, uh, you know, uh, livelihoods and entrepreneurship, and particularly we're working on Handloom. It was Handloom Day yesterday, and they're working on how we can take artisans and everybody online onto the Fikhi on the floor platform, um, and, and how we can help um, them to have a market and help help our artisans. you know to, to uh, be successful and and not let arts die out so that wonderful yeah i mean uh, that's so beautiful jyotsna thank you so much uh, you know for sharing more about what your plans for the future are and i mean i'm sure you know these plans excite you but just listening to them i'm feeling really excited i have like the surge of energy <laughs> in my body and uh, my prayer is that there are more people out there who are thinking along these lines and you know together we can tra- create a different tomorrow you know a better Definitely. tomorrow for all of us so thank Absolutely. you so much jyotsna for being here today on keeping it real with ramona and thank, thank you. you for all the amazing things you're creating please continue creating more and spread you know this beautiful uh, energy of yours this magic that you're creating with all the different things you're doing i wish you all the best and uh, thank again you. thanks so much for being here today thank you and thank you for what you're doing because you are sharing what people are doing you know and you're bringing such positivity into uh, social media which i think is really important so thank you too thanks so much jyotsna bye bye bye